everybody and welcome back. It's been a little bit since I've had the opportunity to do a video. It's been pretty crazy around here, but I do have a few hours to myself this afternoon. So I thought I would take an opportunity and discuss something new with you guys, something that we haven't covered yet. Um, I do just want to remind everybody that this is a growing channel. We have just gotten started. So some things that you can do to help to help get the word out. Um, Make sure you visit the Facebook page, Simple Art for Adults. I'll put that link um, in the description. Also, the website. Um, there's all kinds of really neat information there. There's usually a blog post that goes with every video on the website. Uh, that's at www.simpleartforadults.com. I'll put that link in the description as well. Um, as far as these YouTube video goes, guys, the more you like these videos, the more people will see them. So if you like this video and you think it helps, please hit the thumbs up button down below. Um, subscribe if you want to see more because these are the kinds of things that we are going to continue to cover here in the future. Just kind of new tips and tricks and different ways to color and do art and things like that. Um, share the video with your friends. If you have friends that you think will like it, feel free to share the link with them those kinds of things. Um, every product that I use today, everything, including this coloring sheet, which we'll get into later, I'm going to put a link to down in the description. I'm going to start doing that with all my videos so you guys can find all these things. And, and the links to Amazon products are going to be the absolute lowest prices that I can possibly find on Amazon. Um, and then finally, if you ever have comments, questions, a product that you want to see reviewed, anything like that, tips, tricks, techniques, something that I've done wrong, a complaint, feel free to put that down in the comments. Um, like I said, this is still a small channel. It's growing. I will have time to respond to everybody individually at this point. Um, and you guys are going to help make this happen. Everybody who watches this video, you guys are going to help me uh, grow, this, grow this channel. So I really appreciate any feedback you have. Today, the focus of our video is going to be grayscale coloring. Um, this is a photograph that was taken by someone uh, near and dear to my heart who helps me with um, my website and Facebook page and everything. This is a picture of brown-eyed Susan's that was taken in his yard. Um, and what he's done is, is he's taken this photograph with a very nice uh, camera, changed it into a PDF file, and I've printed it on my laser printer so that I could get a very high-quality image. So basically what you're looking at is a photograph of Brown Eyed Susan's that's been changed to black and white, put it on 67 pound uh, 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 Bristol cardstock from Nina, which is like $7 for 250 sheets, and I'll link to that in the description. And it's basically a photograph that's now a coloring page. How cool is that? I'll also have a link to uh, the Etsy shop associated with Simple Art for Adults. Um, that link to this page is going to be in the description. Typically, they they're, these pictures are $2.50 a piece, and you can download them and you can print them as many times as you want. You're free to share them on social media once you've completed them and colored them, as long as you credit the uh, photographer. His name is Jason Rayo. If, if you can't spell that, I'm, I'm going to put that in the description as well, so everything you need to know will be down there. Um, but right now we're doing a 50% off special because we really want to launch this channel. We really want to see things take off. So there are a total of seven photographs on the Etsy page right now. And you can get every single one of them for $1.25 a piece. And that's half off the normal price. So if you're interested in that, uh, check it out. That's going to be good through uh, June the 25th which today's the 24th, Saturday. Hopefully we'll have this uploaded by evening time so that you guys have plenty of time to go and take advantage of that sale. Now, grayscale coloring is a little bit different than coloring line art. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to pick an image that supports applying whatever medium that you want to apply. In this case, this is a nice image for grayscale coloring because as you can tell, we have a lot of contrasting grays, whites, and blacks. A lot of times I wouldn't look for something with a whole lot of dark, but in this case it's not going to bother me. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to color all the gray areas that we can see. We can choose to leave like, oh, like down here where it's really, really black and, and back here in the background. You can just leave that black. If you're coloring with Prismacolors or a very opaque colored pencil, or if you don't mind applying a bunch of layers, you can certainly cover over these black areas and make those green. And if it was me, I'd probably just leave it black. Um, but what we're going to focus on today, as far as this grayscale coloring tutorial, which is kind of what I'm hoping it's going to turn out to be, is this particular flower right here. And I'm going to zoom in on it, and I will show you why. So give me just a second to do that. Let's see if we can get the focus a little better here. All right. 
that looks like about as good as we're going to get it. Now, if you look at this particular flower, what you're going to see is you're going to see that most of it's going to be like this white colored. Um, and that's the way the, the sunlight was hitting this flower when the photo was taken, and of course the natural color of the flower. But it has these little gray stripes, and these indicate like kind of where the, the natural texture in the flower is. So when you color a grayscale, there are um, just a few things that you want to remember. Now typically what I do, and if you guys want to follow along, I'm using Prismacolor Scholar pencils, but these colors are in the, uh, in the Premiere as well. So what I do is I pick three colors, a light, a medium, and a dark. Of course, if you have more shades of gray, you can pick more colors in the same color family. You can have five, six, but for sake of simplicity, we're gonna do three. And I'm gonna use light pink, pink, and magenta. And these are all Prismacolor Scholar, but again, if you have the Prismacolor Premier, you can find these very same colors in your set and you can use these as well. Um, once again, this coloring sheet is available for download. Right now, there's a coupon where you can get it for $1.25. So if you want to print it out and kind of follow along with me, feel free to do that. With grayscale coloring, I kind of do the opposite of what I would do when I'm coloring line art. So I usually will start with my darkest color, and in this case we have uh, magenta. So we're going to look for the darkest parts in this particular flower, and I'm only going to do a couple of these because I, you know, I don't want to talk your ear off all day. So we look for the darkest parts, and we take our magenta pencil, and we're just going to fill in the darkest parts with a very, very light pressure. It's easier to add more color later than it is to take color off with an eraser, and that is going to be especially true of grayscale. Um, blender pencils on grayscale are kind of iffy, because depending on your printer, your blender pencil may end up lifting off some of your ink, and that's not going to make you very happy. It's going to muddy up your picture, and then you'll be very sad. So we're going to take the magenta, which is the darkest, and we're going to fill in what were the darkest parts on this flower. And that's exactly what I've done. Now we're going to take our lightest pencil, which is the light pink, and we're going to fill in the lightest areas of this flower. Now that's going to be right here in this area. And you can see that there's like a little space that's whiter than the rest uh, on this particular flower. So I'm going to take my light pink pencil and with a very light touch, I'm going to go in and we're going to fill that white area in. And it's lighter down here. And it's also a little lighter out here on this outer edge. So I'm going to go ahead and use a light pink there. And up here on this very tip, it's lighter. So these are going to represent our highlights in our grayscale brown eyed Susan. And we have a little bitty piece down here that's also lighter. So we're going to fill that in with our light pink as well. All right, so now we have our darkest parts accounted for. Actually, if you, if you look at this, you're going to see that it's darker down here than it is up here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in a little bit of this with a light pink as well. And we're just going to try to blend some of our dark pink into that. All right, so we have our darkest parts finished. Uh, this magenta, we have our lightest part finished, this light pink. So now we're going to take the pink Prismacolor pencil and we're going to fill in the rest. We're going to use it to kind of blend all of our colors that we've just put into this flower together. Or into this particular petal. We haven't done the entire flower, just the one petal. Now, you want to make sure when you're doing this that you don't cover up those very, very light areas that we've highlighted because that's going to take away from the texture of the flower. And that's what we're trying to achieve. And that's the entire point of grayscale coloring is to try to get that professional look like, you know, you've been studying art for ages and you know all about light and shadow, even if you don't. Because to be frank with you, I don't. I haven't, I haven't studied those things a lot. And we're going to come back with our light pink, which is our lighter color. And we're going to make that just a little bit darker. And we can go over, as long as the part you're coloring over is darker, you can go over it. So we're going to color over this entire petal 
with the light pink now to try to blend it all together. And make it look like it's an actual flower petal. Now, most of you guys have probably seen these flowers before, and they're pretty common. They grow pretty, I, I'm pretty sure they grow all over the country. I, we live in the Midwest, we live in southern Indiana, where the Ohio River to Kentucky is pretty much right in our backyard here. So we have, you know, some pretty diverse species of flowers and bugs, unfortunately, snakes and spiders and all kinds of yummy things. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure these grow everywhere, and you guys probably know that they're supposed to be yellow, um, and that's just how it is, but um, I'm, like, I, like I'm trying to show you, we're going to make this one pink, because we can. That's the beauty of grayscale coloring. You can make it any color you want. Um, so we'll turn, and we'll go down here to this next one. Now, this one's a little bit different, because there's not a whole lot of dark. The darkest parts are kind of like right down here. So like we did with the first, we're going to come down with our dark pencil, and with a very light touch, because it's not very, very dark, we're just going to kind of go where it's darker. And I'm barely, just literally with the very edge of this pencil, touching this paper where it's darker. And guys, my lighting right now isn't the best. I'm trying to use as much natural light as I possibly can. I don't know how well this is going to show up once I get it uploaded, but we're going to hope it shows up enough. Then we're going to go back to pink, which we or, nope, light pink which is our lightest color, and we're going to fill in all the lightest areas. And now up here at the very tip, we've got a little bit of a darker place, so we're going to leave that for now because we're going to come back with our uh, medium color, which is our regular pink, and fill that in. We're going to fill in the whole, the whole lightest area with this. And then with our medium color, there's just a little bit of a vein. So I'm going to go fill that in with this. There's a little bit of like a texture in that flower. We've got a little bit of a dark spot up here we're going to do with the pink. And then this part down here is a little bit darker than the rest. So again, with a very, very light, like super light touch, we're going to come down and we're going to do the bottom part of this particular petal with the medium pink and just kind of easily blend it up into that very light pink. Alright, now that's kind of hidden our magenta a little, so I'm going to go back over the places where I put the darkest colors, just a tiny little bit, just bring some of that definition back. And now, like we did the first time, we're going to go back over with a little bit more pressure with our lightest color, which is the light pink. If you're using a brand of pencils other than Prismacolor, um, you just you can just find um, find similar colors. If you're using a harder pencil, like um, like the Faber Castell Polychromos, or even a Crayola, or a Marco Ruffin, or one of those, you're you're probably going to need to add more layers to your page than what I'm doing here. And that's because um, those pencils are not as opaque, and it's going to take uh, more pigment to cover to cover your uh, area. And that's why I, when I do grayscale, I almost always reach for my Prismacolors, and the the scholars were just what I had handy. So, and they work just as well for this. You, the only difference is, is they're just a tiny bit harder, and they don't have as many colors. There's only 60 colors. All right. So at this point, we have these two done. Now this one I don't like as well because there's a lot of white space left. So I'm going to color over it one more time uh, just to try to fill in as much of that as I possibly can with my pencils. And then what I would normally do, just I was not prepared. I did not come prepared today, is get um, my mineral spirits, Gamsol, um, Mona Lisa, pretty much any brand you want to use. Um, you can use a blending stump for this. Absolutely, you can use a blending stump. Um, I'm going to use uh, a little tiny artist's 
flat paint brush that I picked up at Joanne Fabric and you're just going to paint over it with the mineral spirits. What this does is it breaks down those pigments that you put on the paper and kind of forces them down into the tooth a little so you can get rid of all those uh, areas of your paper that are still showing through and it'll also soften the transition between our medium pink and our lightest pink so it'll make it look more realistic when we're finished. Now you can't use um, we can't use odor min odorless mineral spirits odor mineral <laughs> odorless mineral spirits on every paper so I wouldn't recommend you know pulling out your favorite coloring book and going to town with the gallon saw because there's a possibility that it may um, it may harm your paper I've used it on this uh, Nina exact fell in Bristol many many times and I very rarely have ever had an issue with it it doesn't work as well with certain pencils as it does others but it, it does a really good job with these um, the Prismacolor and the Scholars. So we're just gonna blend all of our colors together and what you end up with is something that looks natural. It looks like a looks like a flower. This isn't going to look nearly as as good as it would if I were um, if I did the whole thing and I will show you an example if I can find it. Here we go. This is another photograph that's available on the Etsy shop. This is a hibiscus. And this flower was originally pink. This was originally pink. Um, sorry about the shine guys, it's in a protective liner. Um, and as you can see, I have colored it purples, shades of purple, because those are my favorite colors. So we've made it shades of purple. Um, this is the kind of realistic effect that you can get if you take your time um, and you're really patient and you follow the techniques that I just provided with you. This is still a work in progress. Obviously, you can see this lighter strip down here. Um, that's because I haven't gone over it with my medium brown and, and blended it all in yet. So let's just pretend that it's not there. But um, this is this is finished. This area up here is finished. And you can see that we've got the shadows just right. We've got the, the places where the petals overlap colored in just right. We've even got the little veins just right. And that's all using the simple techniques that I just showed you. Um, this um, image as well, this hibiscus with the brick background, this is also available on Etsy. Um, it's normally $2.50, but right now if you use the coupon code, um, some SAFA, so Simple Art for Adults, SAFA Special, all one word, you can get this image and all of the other images that are on that Etsy shop uh, for half price, so $1.25 each right now. This one is by far my favorite. I absolutely love this. This image is beautiful. And then there's this one, um, if you like coloring buildings, there's a barn, um, he's got a birdhouse up there for me, there's all kinds of wonderful things. Alright guys, that's pretty much all I have for you today, and, and honestly, this little bit that I've showed you, this is all you need to know. That's literally all there is to grayscale coloring. You just use the tips that you already know about, the things that you've already learned, how to use colored pencils, and you just apply them, but you work backwards. You start with your darker spots first, then you apply your lighter spots, and then you use your medium to blend, being careful not to cover up your highlights that you worked so hard to put in. All right, guys, I wanna thank you so much for coming and watching this today. Um, the people who have subscribed to this channel, you guys mean the world to me. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to hit that button. Um, thank you for liking the videos. Feel free to comment if there's something you want to see. Comments, even complaints, guys. Um, you know, that's part of growing and being successful in your endeavors is listening to complaints and, and you know, criticism and improving. So that's always something that I am more than happy to see if you have it. Um, there's more to come. I'm going to try to start putting up at least one new video and blog post every single week. I realize it's been a little slow lately. It's been a little nuts around here. And don't forget to use that coupon code. I'm going to put it in the description box. S-A-F-A -A special. S-A-F-A -A special. And that gets you 50% off everything in the Etsy shop that's going to be linked down in the description. 
subscribe guys if you like this hit that thumbs up if you like this button share it with your friends share it with your coloring groups anybody that you think it's going to benefit um, that's what I'm here to do is to help you guys out thank you so much I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy your grayscale coloring hey,